Do you feel the need? The need for speed? It's time for our Top Gun Maverick review. We'll get to that in just one moment. First, this video is sponsored by our friends over at ExpressVPN. So, Top Gun Maverick, it stars Tom Cruise, who was in what they call development hell for quite a while. It had actually been produced a couple of years ago, and then thanks to COVID, it had been delayed because they wanted to put it on the big screen with crowds. Correct decision, because this is a movie that demands to be seen in the theater. Not just because the visuals are awesome, though they are. There are no cgi special effects really here. All legit footage of F-18s mostly. There's some really cool aerial footage here. Really, it's for the sound quality. The sound quality of this film is just unbelievable. When you hear the afterburners and when you hear the sounds of the engines roaring, it really makes a huge difference. Here's the short review. It's awesome. It's great. It's really, really fun. So you don't have to be a fan of the original Top Gun in order to enjoy this film. I'm not a huge original Top Gun fan. I just don't think it's that great. But the sequel is actually pretty awesome in all the right ways. So here is the setup for the film. Tom Cruise, again, playing Maverick. He is now probably supposed to be 55 years old. It's 30 years removed from the events of Top Gun. He's still a captain in the military. Ed Harris, who is now an admiral, he directs him to the Top Gun program to train the best of the best for a specific mission at the behest of Val Kilmer, because Iceman is back for a very brief but meaningful cameo. With all due respect, sir, I'm not a teacher. I just want to manage the expectations. The mission is to destroy a nuclear facility in Iran. So they call it the enemy. It's pretty obviously Iran. This impossible mission where they're basically supposed to bomb the Death Star. The entire mission is clearly modeled on Star Wars Episode Four. They're supposed to run down this valley 100 meters, I believe, off the ground. Because if they do go above that, then there are surface-to-air missiles that are going to strike them. They're supposed to go through this ravine, up and over a mountain, flip over the plane, come down, bomb the facility, zoom out over almost a cliff, which, as they come out, is going to bring them into conflict with enemy aircraft. And he's clearly the best pilot in all the Navy. The question is whether he can train other pilots to do this also. Now, the conflict of the movie is several fold. One is Maverick doesn't get along with the rest of the military because the military brass think that he's outdated. They think that he is too much of a Maverick. He's too wild. He doesn't follow the rules. One of the other pilots who is in the program is the son of Goose. So in the first Top Gun movie, spoiler alert, Goose dies in the original Top Gun. Spoiler alert, she dies in the end. And he has a son in the original Top Gun. And his son has now grown up and is Miles Teller, who does a really convincing impression of Goose, right? He actually, he acts like him, he looks like him and all the rest. And so he is one of the pilots in the program. And Tom Cruise has sort of been watching over him since childhood. And in some cases, sort of obstructing his career because he doesn't want to put him in dangerous situations. Now he has to decide, do I let him go on this mission? Do I not let him go on this mission? Is he capable of flying this mission? You have a a really good kind of compendium crew of other pilots who are amusing and interesting. And then you have Jennifer Connelly, who's playing Tom Cruise's love interest. It's a great dynamic because Hollywood, for a change, actually made the choice of casting people of the correct age. Because of that, what you see on the screen is Tom Cruise and you are happy to be with Tom Cruise. You're happy to see Val Kilmer again. The whole film is basically about a man who's not only learning to accept that he can't control everything around him, which is what it means to be a fighter pilot, is to control literally everything around you. But also, he's learning to accept that he has to settle down. He has to age into a sort of graceful retirement in which he cannot control everything. All of this is is quite delightful. It's very patriotic, the film. I mean, it's just the military is a bunch of good-looking young people who are going out to defend the country under the riskiest of circumstances and doing crazy things in defense of their country and the international order. That's awesome. That's good stuff, okay? It really is. And again, the footage is terrific. I will say Tom Cruise is a movie star. He is a movie star movie star. He may be the last true movie star. He's incredibly winning. He could coast by on his charm. There are a lot of actors who do this in sort of the late stage of their career. Tom Cruise is still going flat out. He does his own stunts in a lot of these movies. He puts himself through, apparently in this case, like three months of pilot training with the rest of the crew so that he could look convincing in doing the piloting sequences. And he really brings his A-game. And this, the movie's really just about him. Miles Teller is in it, but is not really given tons of screen time. Jennifer Connelly is in it and is wonderful and delightful, but she's not a main character. The whole movie is basically just following him. It's actually quite moving. There, there are moments here where you see Tom Cruise recognizing his own age, and it's really nice. It's something Hollywood doesn't do a lot. 
So in this case, you actually get middle-aged people playing middle-aged people and young people who are acting like young people, and it's really nice. We'll get to more on Top Gun Maverick in just one second. First, does it make sense that the same company that controls half of online retail also may passively eavesdrop on your private conversations at home? What about the idea that a single company controls 90% of internet searches, runs your email service, and then gets to track everything you do on your smartphone? Big tech is more powerful than most countries are at this point. They profit by exploiting your personal data. It's time to put a layer of protection between your online activity and the tech juggernauts. That's why I use ExpressVPN. Much of our life is on the internet. Sadly, every site you visit, video you watch, message you send gets tracked and data mined. When you run ExpressVPN on your device, the software hides your IP address, something big tech can use to personally identify you. So ExpressVPN makes your activity harder to trace and sell to advertisers. ExpressVPN also encrypts 100% of your internet data to keep you safe from hackers and eavesdroppers on your network. What I like most about ExpressVPN is how easy it is to use. All I have to do is open up my phone. It says not connected. And then you hit the button and magically it is connected. Behold, all my internet activity is now protected. Well, you can protect yourself the way I do with the VPN I trust to keep me safe online. Visit expressvpn.com slash benyt. Get three extra months for free. And one of the things that Hollywood very often gets wrong Aside from the idea that they they will not give you what you want. They're more interested in surprising the audience than in pleasing the audience. That's not what this movie does. It gives you precisely what you want on pretty much every score. The other thing that Hollywood does here is it just treats the military as people who are awesome because they are awesome. And Hollywood has spent decades treating the military as either victims of mental health problems or people who are victimized by the evil American regime or as imperialists themselves or as corrupt or as terrible. At the very least, as people who are really sort of damaged people in the military. That's not what you get from this. You have people who are under enormous stress, but these are people who are not damaged by the enormous stress. They're people who are just strong. And that's cool. It's good to portray people in the military that way because the vast majority of people in the military are that way. And there's sort of just a baseline patriotism about the film. It's never spoken. But I mean, there are things like Tom Cruise gives a speech and he's in front of a giant American flag. I'm glad to see Hollywood actually appeal in this film to an American audience. This movie is going to play better, I would imagine, in the United States than it will abroad. It'll probably play abroad because, again, they don't actually name the nation that's being attacked here. They don't name the nuclear facility. They say it's the enemy. And they just say it's the, that, that's what they use throughout the film, so it's not to offend anybody. But the film itself is pretty red, white, and blue. And that's just assumed as the backdrop, which is the way movies used to be. So it has a real throwback feel. They get it right. The score is really good. So they, they took all of the original music and then they ran it through the Hans Zimmer machine because Hans Zimmer actually did the score, at least in part, he used the themes. And uh, it comes out great. Cannot recommend highly enough. Think it's wonderful. It's going to make a bunch of money. It should make a bunch of money. I haven't met anyone who's seen it yet who has not enjoyed the film, which is a rarity. There's a reason it's doing so well on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, if you're looking for a joyful theater experience, it really is a, a, an enjoyable and joyful theater experience. This is the movie to see.